Earth is a diverse and ever-changing environment that encompasses mountains, valleys, oceans, islands, and deserts. While world record temperatures can range from 134 degrees Fahrenheit in Death Valley, California, to minus 128 degrees in Antarctica, the average temperature on Earth is around 55 degrees. As aviators, we fly over a wide variety of environmental zones, ranging from temperate to extreme. The desert zone is an area of high and low ambient temperatures with very little water to support plant and animal life. This requires specific equipment for survival. Suffering a forced landing in the desert can severely limit the chances of survival. Facing extreme dryness, moisture, isolation, temperatures, and a lack of natural resources reduces the possibility of making it home alive. Always plan for a minimum of three days in a survival situation. Let's take a look at the skills and techniques specific to the desert extremes. Think of flying over a desert in the context of flying over a large body of water. If you haven't packed it, don't expect nature to provide it. What does a pilot pack for survival? What gear and equipment gets the highest priority? As a survivor, the goal is to stay alive long enough to be rescued. It's important to make a survival plan that includes the right actions and the right equipment. Following a forced landing, evacuate the aircraft as quickly as possible. Go to your designated meeting place. Then it's time to begin working through the priorities of survival. Priority 1. First aid is the treatment of immediate life-threatening injuries given to a sick or injured person until suitable medical treatment is available. This is your priority after evacuating the aircraft and reaching the hole-up site. Once you're at the hole-up site, survivors should account for all occupants of the downed aircraft and evaluate them for immediate life-threatening injuries. Use first aid kits, supplies, and improvised techniques known as survival medicine to treat injuries and stabilize survivors. There are some first aid situations unique to the desert environment. Profuse sweating is not a medical emergency in itself, but is an indicator that the body core temperature is rising and the body is losing water. Once the water stores inside the body begin to deplete, heat cramps may be experienced. Heat cramps are a medical condition produced by the loss of water and minerals through perspiration. This loss of minerals upsets the body's physiology, causing intense muscle cramps, most commonly experienced in the calves and hamstrings. Heat cramps are not a medical emergency, but are a result of dehydration. The remedy for heat cramps is to stop physical activity, get into the shade, promote air circulation, lightly massage and stretch the affected area, and drink water if it is available. Heat exhaustion occurs when the body makes physiological adjustments in an attempt to lower the body core temperature. When the body's water percentage is low and its core temperature is elevated, the body attempts to transfer the heat by moving blood away from the body's core. Blood vessels in the arms, legs, and extremities dilate to increase blood flow away from the core. This action limits blood oxygen flow to the heart, liver, and brain, creating a low-grade hypoxic state. This results in slower reaction times, labored and slurred speech, impaired mental functions, and physical exhaustion. The treatment for heat exhaustion is similar to that of heat cramps. Get into the shade, promote air circulation, and if it is available, sip water. Heat exhaustion victims should also be laid flat with their feet slightly elevated. Avoid drinking water too fast, as this can lead to vomiting and dehydration. Concentrate on cooling the head and back of the neck. A cool, damp cloth on the back of the neck can work wonders to aid in reversing heat exhaustion. Heat stroke will occur as the body core temperature begins to rise due to internal water supply loss. The telltale signs of this are when sweating slows to a stop, the skin becomes extremely hot to the touch, 
and the individual appears incoherent. This is a critical situation, so cooling must occur immediately and rapidly. The best course of action is to cool them from the outside in. If available, douse them in water and promote air circulation. Apply a cool wet cloth or cooling pack to the back of the neck. Follow up your first aid by distributing water stores equally to all survivors. Drinking water after a forced landing can help to relieve the adrenaline increase in your body and calm anxieties as well as prevent dehydration. The general rule in a survival situation is to not ration your water, but to drink as much as you can, when you can, and use your body as a canteen. Priority 2. Shelter. Aviators tend to dress for the flight and not the environment over which they will be flying. In a survival situation, clothing is the first available shelter. Here are some tips to utilize clothing as a shelter. Never remove all clothing in an attempt to get cool. Skin that is exposed to the sun will become burned. Remove clothing in layers and loosen clothing so that it is baggy. Sunburned skin will cause pain, impair sweat glands, and dehydrate the body, leading to heat injuries. If available, wear a hat while in the desert environment to protect the head and neck from becoming sunburned. In addition to a hat, a baggy, light-colored, lightweight fabric shirt that covers the arms and neck should be part of the survival kit. If it is a hot, arid desert, find shade. If the desert environment is cold and windy, set up a wind block. Shaded areas can be up to 30 degrees cooler than in direct sunlight. Wind draws heat from the body through convection. In some cases, the only immediate shelter is the aircraft. Can it be used? That depends. Temporarily, it may be a good option. Long term, it will depend on the ambient conditions. If it is too hot, the metal of the aircraft can create an oven-like situation. If it is too cold, it could become freezer-like inside the aircraft. Remember to bring shelter resources with you. Things like a tarp, survival poncho, large trash bag, small tent, and anything that might be used to create shade can be a survival shelter. Here are some basic shelter construction guidelines. Temperature. In a hot desert, Placing your shelter on top of the hot surface will make for a very hot shelter. In sand, pushing away the top 12 inches will result in a location for the shelter that is about 40 degrees cooler. If the location for the shelter is a hard, rocky surface, creating an insulated barrier between you and the ground will help the shelter be more comfortable. Crash Site Location Never abandon or lose sight of the aircraft. The aircraft is what rescue parties are trying to locate and has resources you might need. Study your surroundings. Are you building your shelter in an area that could suddenly flood during a torrential rain? What type of temperatures are you challenged with? If it's cold, moving to higher elevation will take advantage of the warmer temperatures. If it's hot, seeking lower elevations will take advantage of cooler temperatures. Can a life raft be used as a shelter? Even in the desert, an aviation life raft can be a lifesaver. Made of rubber and inflated in a few seconds, a life raft can provide overhead protection from direct sunlight. Rubber is an excellent insulator, and the life raft may be used for protection from the hot or cold ground. They are commonly brightly colored, making them an excellent passive signaling device. Life rafts may also have a survival kit and an emergency locator transmitter or ELT. Adding an additional layer over the top of your shelter with a 12-inch gap between the layers can make the shelter even cooler. Priority 3. Signaling. Is the emergency locator transmitter activated? Check that the ELT on the aircraft and any handheld ELTs are activated and transmitting. Prepare flares for use. Read the directions. Ensure you know how to use them and keep them available for quick use. Locate and use signal mirrors. Actively reflect light 15 degrees above the horizon in a sweeping motion 
for five minutes every 30 minutes or hang it on a tree in the middle of a clearing for passive signaling. A fire is an effective means of keeping warm in the cooler deserts. Additionally, they can serve as a signal. However, finding materials to use as fuel to burn can be difficult in the desert. With a limited supply of fuel, it may be wise to use a fire for warming only when the temperatures become extremely cold or when needed for signaling. Priorities 4 and 5 Water and Food Distribute, drink, and procure water. In many cases, the only water that will be available is what is in your body plus the supply you bring. The recommended amount is one liter of water per day per person for three days. Conserve it. Drink as much as you can when you can and conserve your water from within. This means to control your sweat by staying out of direct sunlight and performing activities at first light and twilight and not in the heat of the day. Avoid eating for at least 24 hours. The body can survive for weeks without food, but only a few days without water. Water is used by the body to aid in digestion, so eating will hasten dehydration. Don't eat unless you have an adequate supply of drinking water. Don't smoke. Nicotine is a diuretic. Digging in the outside bend of a dry stream bed may yield some water that has to be filtered or purified before consumption. You can use water purification tablets, water filters, or boil the water for five minutes. A barrel cactus can provide water. Getting to it will require cutting into one and extracting the water by chewing on the white fleshy portion, then swallowing the water. Surviving in the desert requires planning, preparation, and determination. Use the survival priorities to help identify items that may be needed. Pack items to address first aid, shelter, signaling, water, and food that would be needed in the desert. Additional survival tools, such as a sharp knife, a multi-tool, flashlight, parachute cord, and duct tape could come in handy. Remember that rescue can take days, not hours. The goal of survival is to simply stay alive long enough to be rescued. With the right equipment, the right priorities, and the right mindset, you can survive in the desert. Stay on task and maintain the will to survive. Stay calm, optimistic, and busy with jobs and tasks. Focus all your mental resources on rescue and survival. To obtain information about training programs in aviation physiology, human factors, and global survival, please contact the Aerospace Medical Education Division, FAA Civil Aerospace Medical Institute, P.O. Box 25082, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma 73125. Call 405-954-4837 or fax 405-954-2305 or go to http colon slash slash www.faa.gov slash pilots slash training slash airman underscore education.